I'm going to show you how to do an investigation into the effects of a named factor and the factor we're going to change today is wavelength or colour of lights um, on the rate of dehydrogenase activity in extracts of chloroplasts. Now this is quite a famous experiment known as the Hill reaction after Robert Hill from uh, University of Cambridge who first developed this technique to investigate actually the light dependent reactions of photosynthesis. Now just to remind you what the light independent reactions in involve, uh, basically we have the release of electrons from chlorophyll. The electrons then flow down an electron transport chain from photosystem 2 there to photosystem 1. Ultimately the electrons end up reducing a coenzyme called NADP along with hydrogen from water. Um, to form reduced NADP and this is one of the products of the light dependent reaction needed for the light independent reaction. Now in this experiment we're actually going to use a blue chemical, very bright blue chemical there you can see called DCPIP and DCPIP is going to take the, the place of our reduced, uh, sorry, of our coenzyme here of NADP. Okay, so this is how the reaction is going to work. So in our experiment we're going to actually extract chloroplast, we're going to add some DCPIP there, DCPIP, and in its oxidised form it's this lovely bright inky blue colour. But when it starts to become reduced as it picks up these electrons, it will form reduced DCPIP which is actually completely colourless, so it will decolorize. Obviously the more electrons are flowing, the faster the electrons are flowing and the greater the activity of these dehydrogenase enzymes involved in the light dependent reaction, the more quickly the DC PIP is going to become reduced and turn colourless. So that is what we're going to measure here, how long it takes for DCPIP to become totally decolorized. Now, the very first thing you need to do is prepare a suspension of isolated chloroplasts. Okay, now there are several steps in this process. First of all, and I've started it here, get yourself a pestle and mortar. One of the best things to use from this, I've just got a bag of spinach from the supermarket. Tear your spinach leaves up, put them in the pestle there, sorry, in the mortar there, add a pinch of sand, and at this point you need to use an isolation medium. Okay, um, I'll put a note on to tell you how you make up the isolation medium. Okay, so add 20 centimetres cubed of isolation medium there and then you need to grind up your spinach leaves and hopefully this will break open the cells and release the chloroplasts. You can do this on a larger scale in a, in a blender which works just as well. Okay, now as soon as you've ground those up the next thing you need to do is actually filter. So I'm using a tea strainer here with some muslin in it to actually remove any large fragments of cell debris. Okay, so if I pour that through there, you can see it dripping through the bottom. Okay, we should have enough there to do the procedure. Right, now the next thing you need to do is actually pour this into a clean centrifuge tube. Okay, I've already done that here. And you then need to place it in your bench centrifuge and spin it at high speed. And I find with my centrifuge, eight minutes works. You're spinning it until you can actually see a nice clear pellet has formed containing the chloroplasts. Okay, so I'll show you that now because I've already made one of those. Right, so I'm gonna get rid of that. So in my centrifuge over here, no, actually I've got it already in the ice bath, I've taken it out. You can actually see there, the sort of clearer liquid at the top, that's what we call the supernatant. We don't need this for this particular investigation. But at the bottom you can see a darker patch. That's what we call the pellet and that's where the chloroplast will be. So the next thing you need to do is actually just get rid of the supernatant. So decant it off into a waste beaker. Okay. And you're then going to resuspend the pellet. So for this you need to use about three centimetres cubed of isolation medium. So into there and get yourself a glass rod, right, and just re-suspend the pellet, okay? Now straight away, this needs to go onto ice. And in fact, all of the apparatus and solutions that you use in this procedure should really all be ice cold, okay? So you can either stand it in an ice bath like that, or I'm actually gonna pour it into a little beaker that's in a beaker of ice there, okay? So that is my chloroplast suspension. 
Now, what you could have done while you were waiting for the chloroplast to spin in the centrifuge, you know, for the leaf extract to spin, is actually prepare your experimental tubes, okay? So to do this, you need six test tubes and you need to label them A to F, okay? And F, you need to cover in foil because this one is our control. It's going to be kept in the dark, okay? Now the next thing you're going to do once you've made your chloroplast suspension is turn down the light. You want everything dim now because as soon as you start exposing these chloroplasts to light, you know, you're going to start and get the light dependent reaction taking place. So we're now going to use uh, different size syringes to add different volumes of chloroplast suspension, DC pip and isolation medium to our different tubes. So in tube number one, for example, I'm going to use a small syringe there to add, let me just measure it out. 0.5 centimetres cubed of chloroplasts. Okay, and to that one, I'm simply going to add th three centimetres cubed of isolation medium. Okay, now test tube A is quite important because we're not going to put any DC pip in there. That is what the chloroplast will look like at the beginning, um, you know, if the DC pip had already decolorized, if there's no blue colour in there. Right, if you follow the instructions now, then in the rest of these tubes, you're going to put 0.5 centimetres cubed of chloroplast extract in each one, okay, including the one that's wrapped in foil, and you're going to add three centimetres cubed of DC PIP to each tube. And as I said, it's really important that you limit their exposure to light. So I've actually set this up earlier. I'll just show you now. Just let me grab them out of the cupboard. If I can find the right cupboard, there they are. Okay, so this is what they'll look like at the start. Okay, now what we're going to do here is vary the light that they're exposed to. So tube A, as I said, is for comparison. It's got no DC pip. Tube B, notice we're just going to leave it and we're going to expose it to white light. Tube C, D and E, we're going to expose to different coloured light. And a very easy way to do this is to buy yourself some coloured filters and make them into kind of little tents like that. And then you could just sit those there in front of your tubes because you're going to stand them in front of a lamp. Okay. So as soon as you've got those like that, you need to now position that in front of a bench lamp and you need to start the timer. I've set that up over here. Okay, right now then I'm going to show you the results that you could expect to see. So let me get the one I set up earlier. Okay, so this has been in front of the lamp for about five minutes already. So this is tube A there, you can see that's just got chloroplast suspension and isolation medium. I'm going to remove the filters so you can see the other tubes. Okay, and I'm hoping that already we've got some kind of change. So if I well, the best thing is, this is your control, this is from com for comparison, so if I remove the foil from that, this is what the mixture looked like before it had been exposed to, to light at all. So if I remove that from the foil, okay, and then we can compare it to our other tubes. So tube B, and you can see, is quite a lot greener, because the, the blue, the DC pip in, in that tube that's exposed to white light is starting to decolorise. Okay, it's starting to become reduced and decolorise. Okay, if I take that tube C as well, at the minute there's not much different because that will take a little bit longer. That was the one in the blue light, sorry, no, in the red light. Okay, do you see? So all along we're comparing now to the um, control. Okay, so the key thing is you need to record the time that each tube reaches the same as your comparison tube, tube A. Okay, that will mean that the DC pip's completely decolorized. These are the kind of results that you could expect, okay? Uh, so obviously we've got no change in tube A because that's just our comparison tube. Tube B, white light, 451 seconds it took to decolorize to, to start to look exactly the same as this, okay, when I did the experiment. Uh, with the red light, it took slightly longer, 758 seconds. And then with D, with the blue light, 1,332 seconds. And actually when I did it, I found that the green light and obviously the no light at all actually still had not decolorized uh, in the 30 minutes that I allowed. Okay.